Hey guys, how's it going? We are out in the greenhouse today. We are prepping to film a succulent wreath video. We've already done a couple of succulent wreaths. Um, we did, actually our very first video we ever did was a succulent wreath, and then we did a heart-shaped wreath last year for Valentine's Day, and now I'm working on another just traditional round-shaped wreath, but we're filming it a little bit different, obviously. Usually we do kind of more traditional, kind of formal, where I'm behind a table giving instructions, and uh, this time we really wanted to do a really good job at getting, like capturing the close-up. Um, all the steps and so that you can see every succulent going in and kind of the whole process that way But I know that that you kind of miss out on a lot of things too with a fast version You know as far as explanation on care and how the plants will do and you know all those good things So um, we just decided to do kind of a behind the scenes uh, For this part of the video Aaron's right behind me He's getting cameras set up right now and I thought I would just show you kind of our setup here So this is the inside of our greenhouse this is where we've been working for a lot of the winter and it's nice and warm in here, but look at my plants. So these are all lined up. This is a boot, a boot tray that I got at our local like feed store and um, that you can put your dirty boots on, but I just fill them up with soil and put cuttings in there. And these just arrived from the succulent source. And then there's, these ones are not cuttings. These ones are actually potted. So these are my last resort succulents. I'm hoping I have enough here. And then you might recognize this project. We did this one for Valentine's Day. And I told you guys in that video that I oftentimes do not leave my projects together for a really long time. I plan on leaving this wreath together though so we can do some updates and show you guys the progress and how everything is looking. But most of my projects we leave together maybe like max three or four months and then I take them apart and use the plants in something else. And since this project I rely heavily on cuttings, I'm gonna use maybe some of the succulents out of this which this now is a month old and look at it. So they all look like pretty much exactly the same. So for everyone who thinks the plants are immediately gonna die like in a week, they do not. So this is a really easy project actually. They look so complicated and complex with all the plants and everything, but it really does not take very long and it doesn't take very much stuff. So here's my wreath form. You can buy pre like moss filled living wreath forms since they've got these feet here. So you can water them and the water has a chance to like, you know, you lay the wreath down, water it, and then it can drain. And there's a little hanger here. And then all I use is multiple screwdrivers. These are just the Phillips head screwdrivers with the pointy end to make holes in the moss. And then you insert the succulents and use greening pins or pull pins right here to help hold them in if they need it. So really not that many supplies as far as the type of things. Of course, it does take quite a number of plants. Something I really like about the succulent source is you can tell them what you're, what you're working on um, or you can order specific groupings of succulents like if you want all rosettes, which is what I really use a lot of in this kind of project. I can order huge groupings of rosette cuttings and I know they'll be beautiful. Almost ready? I think so, yeah. I'm gonna, I got a camera set up up above. Okay, so we've got three cameras going, guys. We have this one here overhead. Aaron fashioned that. Pretty brilliant. <laughs> yes, <it is> brilliant. <laughs> and then this is our main camera right here, and then we will have a third one right there. So that's why we're vlogging it, because we have three cameras that we use for filming, and we're using them all to get the close-up angles. Um, so, yeah. Also, I put this thermometer in here just now. This usually hangs on our house, and it was below the 40 <laughs> outside like high 30s and it's over 60 in here. That is amazing for an unheated greenhouse, I think. Like over, let's see. Yeah, over a 20 degree difference inside. It's actually really quite warm in here. When you start moving around, I get kind of hot. <laughs> but my succulents are happy, so that's nice. Look at it outside. We still have a bunch of snow. It's not as bad in some areas. Of course, right here looks horrible because that's where a lot of our driveway snow is plowed to. We get a huge, huge pile here, but it's going down considerably. Look at that in between the greenhouse and the snow pile. All of the snow from this roof just would come down in a huge piece and would just pile right here. At one point, it was as high as the eave here and went all the way over to the greenhouse up here on the above the curve. It was a complete wall. We could have dug like a nice tunnel through there. Actually feels quite nice out here today. And it's a perfect filming day. We always kind of wait for kind of bright but overcast days so that we're not dealing with a bunch of shadows. Sunny days are wonderful, but when you have a sunny day with clouds, 
it's hard because it's like the lighting changes so often and you get shadows and things. So look who's coming. Hey, Dexter. Hey, where have you been? We've been looking for you. Hey. Oh, hi, buddy. We're a good boy. Also, my friend is coming over in a few hours and we are going to make a bunch of Hypertufa containers. We started the other day and made these 15 containers right here and I made a basket. It's all wrapped up in duct tape right now. So we'll have 30 containers total. She is decorating for a banquet here in town and so I was just giving her a hand with some containers. I think they're gonna turn out really pretty. Dexter, quit eating my grass. Quit. Don't eat my grass, bud. You're gonna wreck it. He doesn't care. <laughs> These are beautiful. Right here, I think those are Grapta sedums, all the beautiful color, and then we've got some Golden Glow sedums right there. I probably won't be using these bigger ones. I mean, these are kind of big, biggish, but I've got a different project for these. Usually the second I get my groupings of cuttings, if I'm not quite ready to use them, if it's gonna be a few days, I'll just put them in a, a little bit of soil, just really shallow, and then give them a little bit of water just to get them by until I'm ready to use them. And I get asked that quite a bit, what I do with my cuttings, how I treat them once they arrive, and I try to get them in soil as quickly as possible to keep them happy. Look at this pajama. Boom. This is like the star of the show right here. This is gonna be pretty. So I've got this one going straight down. Okay. This one is a little bit more wide angle where um, it gets the whole table. The problem is it does get the stuff in the back a little bit. Do you want to move any of this um, to make it look nicer? Well, probably. Can you see the hose? Do we need to move yeah. the Okay. Um, we can put that right outside the door. Can we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me open the door. All right, so we are about ready to get started. I should probably go put some lotion on my hands. Yeah, yes? I'll have a drink, actually. Okay. <laughs> I never think about fingernails or putting lotion on my hands before fast videos, and then I watch them later and I am horrified. I mean, I don't have perfect hands or even nice hands anyway because I, I garden, so I don't like to wear gloves. But I can at least look moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> One time you got sent that uh, gloves in a bottle. Yeah. Remember that? Mm hmm burn the crap out of my hands. Yeah, it didn't really work very well. Mm -hmm. I talked to him about it. I sent him an email and they said that that happens in like one in a hundred. Oh, of course so it would. Look. I think you're one in a hundred. Oh. <laughs> one in a million. Our house, complete with wood steps. They're my roses. Oh boy, I cannot wait for this freaking snow to go away. This is the worst side of the house because it's the north side. It stays really shady over here all the time. This is where I fell off the roof. Right there. Oh, and look at you guys. Look at my hyacinths. It actually smells very strong in here. <laughs> but look at how gorgeous these are. They are almost all in bloom and they bloomed perfectly. Like they're a little stunted and I think that might have to do a little bit more with how cold I kept them. When I was chilling them, I don't think I had them quite cold enough, so I was a little bit worried that it wasn't gonna work. But I think that they're blooming at just exactly the right height, so I'm not having to stake them. They're all staying upright. They all look beautiful. This one looks a little bit more normal right here. Got a little bloom stock, but every, the rest of them are like, kind of blooming really short. And then we've got several that are coming. But look at that, isn't that just perfect? These copper trays worked beautifully. Oh, I'm gonna go all the way around. Oh, there's our pantry door is open. How's that for a panoramic, Aaron? You'll be proud of this when you watch it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not shaky at all. <laughs> Dexter, you're such a good boy. You're such a good mouser. My privet hedge does not look happy with this. This part stood back up pretty good. I want these all replaced anyway, so I guess it's kind of a good, like it forces you to make changes quicker, I guess. I love days like this. I love it when we can have a slow morning. We went to church this morning and then came home and made some lunch. We get to work on a fun project and then I have a friend coming over and it's a nice day outside. Makes me happy in my beans. All right, so we just filmed the first step, which was pre-soaking the wreath. And I already had it pre-soaked, but for the video, we just needed to make sure to get that step in there, so we just showed it quickly. So I've just got it sitting on the ground here, just draining off a little bit. 
Um, I don't want it to be sopping wet. I just want it to be damp. We're about there. And this is cool, you guys. So Aaron is oh. able to control this camera right here with this phone. And I don't you know. You can't see. Here, come over here. Well, there's like a huge glare. There it is. Okay. See that? It's, it's uh, got there's, some lag. Yeah, but... There's a delay. But at least I can make sure that it's recording. I can change the um, the focus. Mm -hmm. So like if you're working over here, I can focus on that. Or if you move up here, I can focus on that. That's so nice because there's no way you're getting up over the top of this thing to look. Because you cast shadows down on the work surface and that just doesn't doesn't translate very well. It's a lot easier doing this. That I could get a monitor and display it that way, but then you've got cables uh -huh. and you have to set your monitor somewhere. It's just a, easier. Look it. Such a good boy. Okay, so I put the first two in and the way I do it is I use a screwdriver to make a hole in the wreath form right there. And then I've got my cutting right here and some of them don't have very long stems. So for the ones that don't have long stems, I use these greening pins, which you can find at the craft store or most garden centers should be carrying greening pins. And you can kind of um, help guide these in and hold them in a little bit tighter with these, but that's it. That's all you have to do. So I'm just gonna do that all the way around the wreath. It's hard not being able to lean in though over over it. Aaron said I can't lean because I'm getting my head's getting into the shot. These are the kinds that are nice right here. With the big old long stem like that. Those stick in there so much better. And also, I gotta show you guys this. So I just pulled a couple of the succulents out of this heart box. And remember, I said these have only been in for a month. Look at all the roots. That is so amazing to me that all of these plants are already rooting in. I haven't lost a single one. They look amazing. Makes me happy. Midway update, I'm really happy with how it's going and I'm really happy with how my greening pins are holding out. I was a little bit nervous about not having enough greening pins. So, and this, these are holding out really well. I did take one rooted succulent and I just stripped all the soil off of it. I didn't um, cut it, so it's not a fresh cut. And that's the thing, you don't wanna put fresh cuttings in wet moss. I think I already said that earlier. But if I didn't, you want to, if you're make, making a project like this, you want to take your cuttings early and have their cut sides callous or dry so that you're not introducing fresh cuts to moisture because that can make them rot really, really fast. Um, yeah. So I'm almost done with the wreath and the wind started to blow and there's tons of condensation on the top of the greenhouse plastic and it's raining down on us a little bit. And since we had that, that camera from overhead hanging on one of the support beams, the camera was moving. So Aaron is trying to figure out how to fix it. I don't know how to do so it. So this is how much, I've got this much left of the top and then I'm probably not gonna do this part on the video, but I'm gonna tuck some in like the little spots in the interior and along the outsides, but you really can't see that very well. I don't think, maybe you can in the video angles, but it'll be completely finished looking when I'm done with hopefully no moss showing, but it is looking gorgeous, I think. Look at that, oh, so pretty. So I think you got it figured out. So we're using a C-stand, this thing right here, instead of the beam, which is right there, because it's freestanding. This is what we hang our diffuser on if it's way too bright. And that's working really well. There's no yeah. wind in here. You good to go? I, I, think, I think that'll do it. Awesome. Okay guys, I got it pretty much done and I'm really excited with how it looks. Look at that. Look at the color and the texture, all those rosettes. So this right here is the top bottom and then I off-centered this biggest one here and then I distributed the other big ones kind of around to where it looked semi even but there are a few spots left so there's like a little spot in there not many though like probably right in here here I won't go down all the way because that's where it's going to sit on the wall but you can see there's just a couple little spots I ran out of cuttings so like I said I don't want to put fresh cuttings in wet moss so what I'm gonna do is go inside and take some cuttings that I think will fit those spots and then I will let them sit for a couple days and then I'll put them in the wreath that way I know that they're safe and 
healthy and they're not going to rot right away. This is what I'm left with guys. I used pretty much, well yeah, everything out of this one. I didn't use this one because I kind of broke it <laughs> on accident. I'll probably propagate the leaves. And I used pretty much everything in this tray. These are all my discarded leaves um, that I popped off the stems so that I had longer stems to stick in the wreath form so I can propagate those. And I pretty much have everything left that was potted in the box. And I'm excited about that because I've got another project that I want to do. So it gets a little bit crazy as far as dealing with you know the wind and raining down inside the greenhouse you just never know what the weather is going to do and i think that is our biggest enemy is um kind of fighting with the weather and because we want to make the best looking videos that we possibly can for you guys and not have shadows and you know all that stuff so anyway so now now that that's done um, i'm gonna we probably won't take end shots like ending pictures or pans or anything and until I get it all done. So until I get all of these pieces filled in. So we just got an email though from Crescent, Crescent Gardens. And if you guys remember last fall, I think it, it was in a vlog and then we did an update about a self-watering container from Crescent Gardens car, called True Drop. And I was just trying it out. I didn't know if it was gonna work really well and I freaking love that pot. So I planted it up mid to late summer, I think it was, and by the end of fall, by the clean out time, I'd only had to fill the reservoir twice, two times. That's amazing, like it went six to eight weeks between me having to fill the reservoir and the plants looked amazing. So here it is in the greenhouse. I need to clean it up. So we just got an email from them because they wanted us to take a picture of it kind of in snow um, with branches and maybe an evergreen in it. So I'm gonna plant it up really quick and get a picture for them so there's a blueberry looking really nice still fall color I don't know we'll see what what's going on so I'm working on the container for crescent right now and I just popped my head out of the greenhouse and it is snowing can you guys see that it's not coming down very hard yet well that's depressing but the pot's looking really nice so far so I've got an arctic fire dogwood Sprinter boxwood and a Carex. I think this is an ice ice dancer. No, Evergold. Really pretty, and that's what it looks like through the winter. Clean the pot up, so we're gonna go put it out somewhere in the snow. See what it looks like. So we got to move the container back into the greenhouse because it's not bright enough out here to get good pictures. So move it into the greenhouse, move it back out tomorrow, and hopefully the lighting will be better and we can get some good pictures tomorrow. So that's pretty much it for today, you guys. It's now like 4.45 and I've got my friend coming in a little over an hour to start making Hypertufa containers. I think I'm going to try to get a jump on it though because it's going to get dark by then and it's snowing now and it's cold so I'm gonna try to get some of them done because I think we would both like to be inside better than out here. Um, just realized that I don't think I gave any instructions on care or anything on the succulent wreath. So really quickly, I'm gonna probably let mine set flat for about two to three weeks and let the succulents kind of like get used to their spot, maybe start rooting in a little bit. Then I'll attempt to hang it. If any of them seem, lo seem loose, I can use more greening pins to kind of help them, you know, like hold them in place. If not, I can let it lay flat. Again, usually six weeks is about the amount of time, but since I use so many greening pins, most of them are pretty secure and it's okay to hang. I water mine this time of year probably, I wanna say like I check it every, I do check it once a week and I might go, I might water it every seven to 14 days. It totally depends on the time of year. In the summer, it'll be every seven days. Right now, probably every two weeks. To water it, I just set it back in the tub, run water over it to where the water's even coming up a little bit, like up um, the sides of the wreath so that it, the moss can soak it in a little bit. So I'll let it soak for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, and then I'll take it out of the tub and set it somewhere where it can drain. Uh, and then once it's completely drained and there's no more water coming off of it, I can hang it back up where it was. And they typically do really well that way and I'll put it in a really pretty bright spot a really bright spot in the morning time and then some protection in the afternoon of course right now since we're still in winter I give it all the light it can take so I just have them under grow lights mostly um, and they do really really well and then the summertime I'll make sure it goes in a morning sun afternoon shade spot 
I hardly ever fertilize succulents that are packed in that closely together and that way they don't want to push extra growth and outgrow their area. Um, a wreath like this can last for quite a long time. Um, when you pack them in that close together they don't tend to grow quite as quickly and also just I mean think of all the time that they're just sitting there trying to form roots. So you've got several months where they're just trying to establish themselves to even put on any new growth um, and then after that they'll start to grow a little bit and you can pop one out here or there and make room for you know the other ones and do minor grooming and it'll probably be a year before I'll do any major overhaul on it but I'm going to try to keep this one around and so, so we can show you guys updates and show you how it's looking and if there's any problems with it I can show you that as well so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video it's probably really long I always feel like vlogs get so long I ramble I ramble a lot anyway thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next video bye